Technology is developing more rapidly than ever before, and with it, our world is becoming smaller. But until now, transportation hasn't been able to keep up. We'd like to get there faster, and we think we can do that. Every day, more than 8 million people hit the skies. Aviation has become one of the largest industries in the world, and it's growing exponentially as airlines continue to innovate and expand. But even as the industry grows, it hasn't sped up. In fact, commercial airplanes fly at slower speeds today than they did in the 1960s. This is mostly due to the need for better fuel efficiency, which happens at slower speeds. But there's a growing demand for more efficient technology that can bring us places faster. This is where NASA comes in. Two, one. You see a new excitement in aeronautics and space. It's a little mini boom going on. This is Nils Larsen. A chief test pilot at NASA's Armstrong Center, he's working on the next generation of supersonic airplanes. You have the X-59 Quest opening a whole new market. The X-59 Quest is a single passenger supersonic demonstration plane being developed by NASA. It's powered by a modified GE F414-100 engine, which was designed for the FA-18 Super Hornet. The plane is designed to produce quieter, safe sonic booms. We've been playing with the shape of the airplane to keep the shock waves from coming together so that they don't form that loud sonic boom. Normally, if you hear a sonic boom, it sounds like boom boom. What we're trying to produce really sounds like distant rolling thunder. So it's not so displeasing. It doesn't have that startle effect. The first Quest flight is scheduled for 2021. The data collected will help the FAA determine if supersonic flight should be reinstated over land in the United States. Right now, you're not allowed to go faster than the speed of sound. When it comes to the sonic boom, they don't have a regulation on how loud or displeasing the sound can be. With low boom flight demonstration, we're gonna have to go out and do this sonic thump with several different communities and figure out what that level should be. The Quest will serve as a framework for private aviation companies to develop their own supersonic planes. We need to set the standard, then everybody else can figure it out from there. There's companies out there that are very interested at being able to get people places faster. Well, they're looking at us going, come on, hurry up. Boom Technology is currently developing a two-seat demonstrator aircraft called the XB-1. Much like the Quest, this plane will be used to test technologies for mainstream supersonic flight. Once they finish testing, Boom will build the Overture, their full-scale Mach 2.2 55-passenger transport plane. It'll be able to travel over 5,100 miles nonstop, about the distance from New York to Istanbul, and tickets will cost the same as today's business class. Arion and Boeing are developing the AS-2, a luxury supersonic business jet that will be 60% quicker than today's fastest business aircraft. The AS-2 will be powered by GE's Affinity, the first civil supersonic engine to be developed in 55 years, and the first supersonic engine class built specifically for business jets. Unlike NASA's Low Boom Quest, the AS-2 and XB-1 are designed to fly subsonic speeds over land and supersonic over oceans. It's gonna open up whole new markets, other ways for people, other companies to build airplanes, uh, airplanes that don't even exist yet. After supersonic, who knows where we'll go? Companies like Boeing are already planning for commercial hypersonic planes. If engines can successfully bring us past Mach 10, you could theoretically fly from London to New York City in just 30 minutes. The future of aviation will take us around the world faster than we could ever imagine. And with these developments in supersonic, it's just around the corner.